Good evening, everyone. My name is Juliet Jones, and I'm with Universal Family Connection. We are a social service agency, and we have two locations um, throughout the show. I'm going to be telling you about our uh, two locations, but for right now, we're uh, at 1350 West 103rd Street in the Beverly neighborhood, and I'm going to take you to our website so you can see and come on board and Go to our website and see all the services that we have. As a social service agency, I work in the risk reduction department and I do HIV counseling and testing as well as I facilitate support groups for HIV positive individuals. We also have um, individual counseling with a licensed clinical counselor. Universal Family Connection, they have an array of support groups. They have domestic violence, they have um, substance abuse programs. They also have an intact program which keeps the family intact. So so please reach out to Universal Family Connection. I want to give you our phone number is 773-881-1711 and my extension is 1156. So if you want an HIV test free of charge and if you want to know about HIV prevention and education then I'm that uh, go-to person. And our uh, HIV support groups are every Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the Fridays. And so, once again, uh, greetings everyone. You are watching the live call-in show. And perhaps some of you uh, notice in the background, it's focused on sexual health. So that means all topics about sexual health is on the table. So feel free to call in with your questions around HIV and other STDs or sexual health. Um, the phone number to call is 312-738-1060. Are we also on the internet? So feel free to go to Ken TV and pull us up on your computer screen or your tablet and so forth. And so today's topic, we're going to be talking about, I want to focus to our overhead, it's going to be about prevention, prevention of a sexual disease. And just for today's topic, it is going to be about HIV. And so we're going to talk about how to prevent or to break that HIV chain of infection. So think about it, how to break that chain of HIV infection. So feel free to call in and you tell me where you see yourself, whether if you're HIV positive or, H or if you're HIV negative, feel free to call in and tell me about um, what are you doing to prevent, you know, either the transmission of HIV or what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because that is important if you're HIV positive or negative. So for we're going to prevent HIV. And the best way is to know about that prevention, right? So you have to know um, what causes HIV. So what are you doing to prevent that? Are you abstaining? If you're not abstaining, are you using condoms? or? They got a pill for HIV negative called PrEP. And at this point, everyone is, is assumed to be negative. So, so are we doing those preventive measures to keep us HIV negative? And so it takes more than just, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm this, and I'm that. But do you know your status? So let's focus right here. You may not see it as clear, but it says test on this cycle. This is a cycle. It says test. So now it's important to get that HIV testing. And at Universal Family Connection, we do offer free HIV testing <clears throat> uh, because testing is important. Is you have to know your status, you know. And I frown upon people when they talk about someone that's HIV positive. And see me, I don't add to it other than to say, well, hey, do you know your status, you know? And so now the conversation gets quiet. But then I like to further educate that person on the importance of that to get tested, to know their status. And so let's go back to here. Now, once a person, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Once a person tests HIV positive, now it is my, my duty to service them, to link them to care to a doctor, to infectious disease doctor. So, and during that time, they're gonna be followed every three to four months at the doctor's appointments and if it come to the point when the doctor to decide okay we're going to uh, uh to start you on hiv medications are you ready remember it's client center it's for you to say as a patient okay i'm ready to for hiv treatment and hiv treatment consists of uh, 
you know, going to your doctor, getting your labs done that's as a treatment as well, as well as taking your medications. Now, and so my, my topic today, I really want to talk about now that you're HIV positive. So I'm really talking to people who are HIV positive. Now that you're really HIV, now that you've been diagnosed HIV positive and you went to the doctor maybe three or four times out of a year, or if you only went at one stage when you was linked into care by that uh, case manager or that HIV tester, where are you now in your care? So that's what I'm reaching out for callers to call in and tell me now that you, uh, you, were, you were tested HIV positive and it was a diagnosed through a doctor and you went to the doctor every three to four months, but you only did it for a year or if you only went to one visit. So I need to talk to uh, the people that's HIV positive. I want you to please call in 312-738-1060 and you don't have to give your name. Just, just tell me, give me your story. Tell me where are you at in your care? Are you lost to care? If so, how can we at Universal Family Connection get you to be re-engaged back into care? How can we do that? And if you are in care, and I'm going to focus back on here, how can we retain you to be in care? How can we keep you to be adherent to your HIV medications as well as your doctor's import, uh, doctor uh, appointments? Because, see, that is important because... You know, with the city of Chicago, they're trying to see why, what is going on. You know, the different service providers, and I mean service providers, I mean it could be uh, the clinic or the hospital that you go to, or even your community-based organizations that service someone with HIV. Uh, the data is, is out there stating, hey, they went to one doctor's appointment, or they only went to a doctor's appointment for a year, or maybe even five years. It may be even ten years, but somehow they were lost to care. So, you know, I have statistics from the city of Chicago, and it, it states that 95% um, uh, of people were tested for HIV. And so now, you know, they, they've been screened, and then it found out that 85% is, is actually positive for HIV. And so as you go through that cycle of life, now that you're HIV positive, you're supposed to be in care. You're supposed to have that treatment. What now is coming, you know, the data is looking like, okay, out of that 85% that was uh, diagnosed HIV positive, only 47% is in care. So what happened? There was, that's a big gap out there. That is, and we're talking about, we just talking about numbers and statistics. We're talking about people that are positive. They're not being in care. So I want to know why. What is your story? What is going on? How can we best help you so you can, so we can re-engage you back into your HIV medical treatments? Or can we help retain you into your care? Um, and so 47% is a large... I mean, that means that a large number of people are not in care for the HIV needs. And so that's what we want to focus on. Uh, at Universal Family Connection, uh, we have individual counselors that can help determine, you know, uh, to for you to, to see what's going on that you're not in care. If it's referral services that you need, then that's what, you know, those service providers like myself at Universal Family Connection can do. The service providers, they call them case managers or medical case managers at your doctor's office can also best help to give you the referrals that you need. And, you know, and sometimes it's more than just being HIV positive. They, they call them uh, detriments of social health. It could mean you need housing. Uh, that's the case. Is that why you're not in care or taking your medication within their social service agencies that help with uh, housing, uh, employment, and training? There, it could be domestic violence involved, and that's why that HIV positive person is not in care. Well, we all know that it's best to seek help for those other uh, health issues as well that can impact why a person is not going to their doctors every three to four months because that is the guideline and it's not just it's a guideline set by the medical profession it's it should be your guideline your lifestyle you should embrace 
the fact that you're you, that you are uh, seeking services and that you're in treatment because now we we, we you know so much research and medicine has been out there that you can be HIV positive and live the best fulfilling life as possible but obviously for a person to fall out of care that means that they're, they're missing something so it's more than just taking the medicine it's more than just seeing their doctor um, is it other um, medical problems because as you age with HIV you know I did a, a, a story on that when you're aging with HIV there may, may be other health issues that's in the way of you want to even deal with your HIV illness it could be diabetes it could be heart disease it could be high blood pressure or it can just be you know substance abuse well then those issues need to be addressed and that's why it is important to seek the services of individual counseling as well as support groups. So I want to, to, to stress that. And I want to hear from people who are HIV positive or not. You can be HIV negative and because we all know someone at this point in age, we're talking 35 years in, into the illness of HIV infection. So, so we all know someone. We all can embrace what's going on. We're all impacted you know, by that. And also, you know, I wanted to uh, talk about, you know, with the new Trump administration, you know, that has changed health care reform. Now, and, you know, some of those, those numbers don't tell that story. Some of those numbers don't tell how that insurance that that person had before uh, the Trump administration, they were able to go to the doctors freely. They were able to go access medication for HIV. They were able to move out throughout the, the, their uh, doctor's appointments, you know, with no problems. But now with the new uh, health care reform, insurance is an issue. And what I don't like about those numbers is it doesn't address that. <laughs> It really doesn't address that, okay, well, maybe that person that was HIV positive um, uh, uh, 10 years ago, now they had to change their insurance plan. Hmm. And they were going to this particular clinic. I don't want to say any clinic, but this particular clinic. And now they found out that that doctor doesn't accept their insurance. Well, of course, now that, that burden is on that HIV positive patient because now they may not have an HIV navigator to help them throughout the system to see what insurance should they uh, enroll in. You know, and then they got guidelines about the insurance. You got to, uh, you may get confused. Is it November I'm supposed to reapply? Uh, if you look at the, listen to the TV, some says November, some, the ad says November, some says December, some says January, you know, and then you, you, you hear about the administration, the politics going on. Yeah, that is frustrating. That can cause you to be out of care. And those numbers don't show that. The numbers don't depict that. And so if you need a, 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 a HIV navigator or even just a health care navigator to get you back into the right insurance plan, well, feel free to call me at Universal Family Connection. I can assist you with that. And my number is 773-881-1711. My extension is 1156. But also, I just want you to understand that you can also go to your doctor because there, there are medical case managers uh, there to assist you. They have peer navigators now at clinics and hospitals to assist you to get you the best insurance so that there will be no interruption in your care. So you can be retained into care or re-engaged back into care um, because that is important. Um, and also, you know, those, those uh, numbers, the data trends and HIV, it also says that, uh, as I said before, 85% was HIV positive and 47% is only, 47% uh, is only actually going to the doctors. Well, you would think they're being treated, right? They're on HIV medications, but somehow the number still is at 47%. That now they're not reaching virally suppressed. And so if anyone know what virally suppressed is, please give me a call and let's talk about that. What does it really mean? My phone number here is 312-738-1060. Um, so I'm going to tell you what virally suppressed means. Now that that person is taking their HIV medications every day, What's going on? Are they taking their medications? Because now in the blood, you know, work that they get every three to four months, it's coming back 
the virus is, is, is building, the viral load is multiplying in, in their immune system. And so they're not achieving that virally suppressed. And you may have heard virally suppressed as being none detected. You know, that means that the viral load was so low that it was not detected during that testing for the viral load. And so what's going on there? I mean, now, if, if you don't know, you know, there are new medications out there. And so that's why it's important to connect with the medical case manager or, or a, a supportive case manager, as well as talk to your doctor about why you're not adhering uh, taking the medication. Is it that the medication, is it that you at medication fatigue? You don't want to take the five pills a day. You want you don't want to take the three pills a day. That could be a burden as well. You probably don't want to take the two pills. Well, there's a one pill regimen that's out there. So perhaps you didn't know that, or perhaps that may be the difference, but being followed by your uh, HIV medical doctor, he can best or she can best shape along with you, what medications you should be on so that you can achieve a non-detected viral load. Now, I, I want to get into non-detected viral load uh, at our next uh, uh, AIDS call-in show because that is an interesting subject. And they call it being HIV treatment as prevention. So I won't get into it now, but if someone wants to bring up that subject, feel free to, to call and do that. But I just want to, to stress the importance of being in care, retained in care or re-engaged in care. And so I, I'm asking, what, what is it? What's going on that if you're HIV positive that you're not being adherent to your doctor's appointment or taking your HIV medications. Now I know um, there's so much things going on, and we didn't talk about the violence. You know that that may have an impact on our social determinant as well. You know where we live, and so those those data of those numbers that I just mentioned don't include those things, and that's why it is important for you as an individual that's HIV positive to talk to your doctor. Uh, to, to explain what's going on, you know, be honest. Are you taking your medication? If not, why? Uh, you know, why not? And how come you're not going to your doctor's appointment every three to four months? Why did you fall out of care? And then some people may be long-term survivors, right? They may have had the illness of HIV for 20 or 25 years and they're not in care. So I would like to hear from someone like that. And it's not to be judgmental, it's just to learn to, to help, to see what's going on. You know, why are you not uh, uh, being followed by your doctor for your HIV illness? And so that's what I like to hear from. And as I say, it can be, you know, on an anonymous basis. It's not a, a tracking of your, your number or your name. But it's, it's also about sharing of information that may help someone else. So that's what I'm about, sharing of information that may help someone else that's listening uh, and tuned in to our uh, AIDS Live call-in show with the topic of focus on sexual health. And, and sometimes people, and you know, that stigma is, is real, I understand that, because sometimes people like to take HIV out of the realm of it being a medical illness. That's what it is, it's, it's a disease. It's an, it's an HIV uh, disease that's being followed by a doctor. And so if we just educate you know, people on that and, and get them to understand that, then that should help ease some of the, the stigma surrounding the disease in itself. And so by talking about it, you know, uh, that's why I'd focus on sexual health. That is important because that HIV individual is not, they're not all abstaining from sex. And so that's why it's important to, let's break that chain of infection. Let's start, when I say at that preventive stage, you know, because there's uh, another measure out there is called PrEP. That's a preventive measure. And that's for only HIV negative individuals. And I did go into a discussion about PrEP on previous shows. It's a, they call it a little blue pill, but it's, it's, a, it's more than just a pill. It's a preventive measure 
for someone who HIV negative. And they're also being followed by a doctor because I want to stress that to keep it back into the focus of sexual health. You're being followed by a doctor on uh, when you're taking that HIV uh, prep pill to help keep your HIV negative. So that's why that's important. And I just want to share some, some more data. Um, just to share some more data. HIV data and trends in Chicago. And this is according to the city of Chicago. There's, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> the 23,355 people living with HIV. And there's roughly about 920 new cases each each year. And so that, that tells you that hmm, the numbers still haven't really trickled down to zero. Will it ever get down to zero? Will we ever have that in Chicago or anywhere that HIV is no longer? Will that disease be dead in itself? That's what I would like to hear from someone. Please give me your perspective on it. Please call 312-738-1060. And so, you know, keep in mind, uh, people are still being infected with HIV. So there's still some challenges out there. And like I said, and it could be that that person who is HIV positive uh, didn't get tested or they uh, did get tested and they were linked to care and they only went to one doctor's appointment or they went to five or ten or a hundred throughout, you know, a ten year span of more, and now they they stop going, or they stop going regularly to their doctors, and not just going to the doctors, but they stop taking their medications, or perhaps that regimen that they're on is not working anymore. They need a new regimen. Well, those are questions and concerns. I do uh, certainly stress for that HIV positive person to talk to their medical provider about and sit down with them to see what's best, what's best for them. And so, you know, um, it is our duty, you know, at Universal Family Connection or any uh, service organization or clinic or hospital to best help educate people. So I think we do, I think we need more education out there on HIV um, and AIDS because I think somehow we got used to it. We know there's uh, medications out there now um, where this medication that a, when a person is positive they take in HIV medications or there's uh, appeal to prevent HIV. I think we're getting too relaxed in it and I think the campaign that they have don't reach um, the general person or, or that, that, that plain Jane or that plain Bob and I think that's a mistake. And I think the campaign needs to be ongoing. It needs to be year round. You know, I don't want to have to go back and say, oh, you remember that Prep for Love, you know, campaign? You know, we, we should always have that uh, HIV prevention education out there so we won't forget. So we don't have to say, oh, do you remember? So it's important. Uh, it seems like now to me, I've been in this field for 20 years. It's like they, they, they're moving away from abstinence. I don't even hear that as a preventive measure anymore. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I just don't, I have about 10 sheets of paper in front of me and I don't see that. I don't see absence nowhere on my, uh, on my uh, documents. And I think that's, that's, that's not right because the 100% way of preventing HIV is abstinence from, from sex. Now, there are HIV disparities in Chicago, according to the, my statistics, of course they're outdated, but they're 2015 uh, statistics. It says 82% of new infections are men, 79% are men who have sex with men, it's called MSM, 50% are blacks, and 21% are Hispanics or Latinos. And 49% are less than 29 years of age. And I know numbers, in a sense, mean something, but at some point, numbers may not. So, but anyway, my name, once again, is Juliet Jones, and you are watching our Focus on Sexual Health. And I'm with Universal Family Connection. We have support groups every Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. 
to our AIDS call-in show with the focus on sexual health. And you can always reach out to me at Universal Family Connection for support group or HIV counseling and testing. So I'd like to thank you, and I want you to tune in again. Okay? So I'd like to thank everyone. Goodbye.